Hello, how are you doing? In this chapter 17 of my rating, you're going to find out by the end of it whether you were or are coercively controlled by the religious group that you were or are in. My family was destroyed and still is by coercive control, by the religious cult that we were all born into, that all of us have got out yet. And so, um, chapter 17, uh, I'll start off by defining what coercive control is. It's um, Coercive control is to control people with the purpose of removing the victim's freedom. And it's uh, illegal, it is a serious crime uh, act in 2015 domestically in England and Wales and uh, people are lobbying at the moment to get the legislation changed so that religious groups and cults uh, are not allowed by law <coughs> to coercively control and this is what it does there's 10 uh, features of coercive control according to the official statutory guidance and I'm going to uh, read them um, in relation to how it affected my, my life personally and that might give you um, a better idea of how it actually works. Um, I've come to this quiet field, by the way, with horses and people have arrived to feed them uh, as they do. <clears throat> but we'll carry on regardless. So uh, um, according to the official statutory guidance, isolating is to hit the 10 features. Isolating a person from their family and friends is the first one. And this happened to me from the age of four to 22. I was not allowed to have any contact with any of my four grandparents, two uncles and aunts and ten cousins. When they tried to make contact, they were denied it and not let into the house. I was never allowed to go into the houses of my school friends and they were never allowed in our house to play or for birthday parties or sleepovers. After leaving school, I was not allowed to socialise, eat or drink with work colleagues or friends. And that, I believe, would come under isolating a person from their friends and family. Number two, monitoring their time. Um, I had to attend every meeting for 22 years, which was 11 a week, latterly 10, unless ill. And uh, this was monitored. If you didn't turn up, the questions would be asked. Number three, monitoring a person via online communication tools or using spyware. Now, when I was in uh, up to 1988 in the cult, uh, of course, we didn't have um, we didn't have such electronic devices. In fact, they were completely forbidden mobile phones and computers etc so that didn't apply but nowadays i know some cults of which monitor their members by a central monitoring company which they it belongs to them and they uh they monitor all the um computers and mobile phones of their members and they have software where they know every single search that they make on google for example and they know where their phones are uh, they know where they are by location and uh, they are being monitored um, and this would come under number three of coercive control. Number four, taking control of aspects of their everyday life such as where they can go, who they can see, what to wear and where they can sleep. That is coercive control and when I was in the cult the then law as laid down by the man of God controlled the type of house we were allowed to live in, the type of drains the house had to have the jobs we could or could not do, where we would eat, where we couldn't eat, where we couldn't sleep, where we, who we couldn't marry, the length of our hair, uh, no, none of these beard things, where we could sleep, who we could marry, so yeah, the forbidding of pets, the total ban of mobile phones, computers, TV, radio, and many, many more, which I believe would come under taking control of aspects of our everyday life. And there's, um, there's almost a thousand cults in the UK alone probably seven to ten thousand in the US and cults exercise this coercive control to a varying degree see if you can relate to any of these things as I'm listing them number five depriving them access to support services such as specialist services or medical services um, I remember psychologists counselors and the like being strongly discouraged when I was in uh, but I don't know what to what extent Number six, repeated, repeatedly putting them down, such as telling them they are worthless. And uh, many times the scriptures were quoted um, and I believe completely misinterpreted, which says that we are wicked and deceitful above all things. And we were very, very often reminded uh, or sort of say accused of that. 
uh, that is coercive control control number seven control ability to go to school or place of study and um, after I was 16 I knew that if I went to university it would be it would mean being cut off completely from my family maybe for life I wasn't allowed to go to university uh, so our education was uh, affected there number eight preventing a person from having access to transport or from working um, I was allowed to work but only in certain types of job I was prevented from doing what I really wanted to do which would involve working Saturdays uh, it was a job as a photographer I couldn't do that uh, so I gave that up because of fear of the consequences and number nine preventing a person from being able to attend school college university I've covered that and number 10 limiting access to family friends and finances which again uh, was in number one and so um, that is what controlling cults do and um, I'm just summarizing this chapter here that's a question is how can decent intelligent humans get to the place whereby their minds and wills are taken over by a coercively controlling personal system well in my case and in the cult I was in pretty much every single person was born into it and their parents and grandparents and sometimes great-grandparents have been born into it so they didn't have their brains washed as it were they didn't have they weren't indoctrinated with something new it was all they ever knew but many uh, cults they um, they take in a person and they coercively control their minds and indoctrinate them into believing their beliefs and becoming fervent disciples and followers to the, even to the point of separating their families if their families don't adhere, ad adhere and the question is how on earth can people end up doing this how can you or I uh, could could we in the future end up our minds being completely overturned and um, digressing slightly I watched a documentary recently called beyond the curve and it wasn't about the flat earth theory it was about how people get to believe that the earth is flat everyone pretty much I suppose starts off believing the earth is a sphere a globe and over a million people now believe that the earth is flat uh, I am not one of them I hasten to add and this documentary shows and it was uh, it was um, uncanny the the similarities between how flat earthers could indoctrinate and coercively control their uh, students as it were into believing that the earth is flat and how they did it was uh, so similar to the way cults trap people they do it by subtly introducing ideas which the victim um, partially agrees with and as they go on they add more and more uh, weight to their arguments just gradually gradually like the thin ends of a wedge and at some point there's a tipping point of emotion whereby they get told that these people get told that we have an you have an enemy you have as a, there's an enemy out there deceiving you into believing the earth is round and they are tricking you and uh, de debilitating your life uh, the religious ones actually think some of them think that you go to hell if you believe the earth is round and when it becomes emotional then people are have gone into another phase of being uh, indoctrinated and by that time then they start giving in to all the uh, statistics and the data and the theories and uh, they become a full fully fledged believer evangelist preacher of the flat earth and it's the same with cults it is very very subtle and very dangerous <clears throat> so how can people will this how can people get to that state there's four factors when I wrote this chapter that I realized and I'll summarize them the fear of consequences of believing something different if there's fear involved for example if you were to believe something different you could lose your husband wife children family that would be uh, a powerful disincentive to even consider an alternative viewpoint this is how many people remain coercively controlled in religious cults number two the fear of being wrong for many maybe decades or the whole life imagine waking up one day and 
um, you realize that the Jehovah's Witnesses was just a man-made fake as was the Mormon and these coercively controlling religious cults who all claim to be the right one of which there's over 40,000 denominations in the world uh, almost a thousand controlling cults in the UK all claiming to be the right one and you wake up and you realize for decades you've been wrong well that's what happened to me um, when I was 24 I realized the first cult was wrong and then I went into another one for six years read all about it here and when I escaped out of that one again it was such a shock to realize I'd been wrong all those years why should I be right now by the way I'm not saying I am right in fact I'll tell you what I believe I believe God is right <laughs> it's not about me being right anymore that's another subject moving on number three immersing that one of the reasons why people get uh, choose to be coercively controlled is because they immerse themselves only with people who believe the same as them they spend most of their time and their quality time with people who believe the same as them which helps reinforce the beliefs strengthens them and eliminates possibilities of of the belief being error birds of a feather flock together it's uh, it's the story of mankind isn't it or one of them the fourth reason of why people are coercively controlled so easily is because pride and ego rises up protect, to protect their self-righteousness. The pride of man and his ego does not like being wrong at the best of times. And when so much is at stake, when a whole lifetime of belief and, uh, and value has been put into one particular religious group, um, the sting of having to even admit that they've been wrong can prevent people from even looking at any alternative viewpoint and so these four reasons are why people um, decent intelligent human beings can get coercively controlled and remain that way when you get these four traits running in the minds of a person and there are many other traits too this is how an indoctrinated and coercively controlled person reacts to suggestions contrary to his or her beliefs though their ears hear the suggestion they literally block the thought from getting into their mind like a stock stop cock on a toilet a valve shuts and closes down this enemy thought that violates what the person believes like putting your hands over your ears and making a noise so you can't hear what someone is saying the mind of a coercively controlled person refuses access to anything that threatens their belief system they simply do not hear anything contrary to what they want to believe part of the reason of this chapter in this book is to create awareness about this because I'm not here to coercively control you into changing your mind or heart or thoughts or actions I respect your complete free will your life is your choice but by creating awareness which I wasn't aware of when I was coercively controlled uh, meant that I had no option to believe anything else and so this book is just providing an option uh, an alternative for you to consider if you wanted to so um, uh, let's have a look what else is there um, coercive control in most religious groups ranges somewhere between north and 100% that's a fact many only exert a small amount of control for example by giving off vibes of displeasure if you miss some of their meetings they may say where were you you know you can't keep on it's unspoken really you know uh, we really missed you uh, are you going to be coming next week uh, and that, that in itself can put pressure on someone Con control puts pressure on people how much pressure do you need how much control do you want at the under, other end of the scale are the cults that control their members lives in every way to the point that when they call for mass suicide the members obey without question that was i would say is an, a 100 percent controlling cult i would in my opinion the cult i was born into is a 90 percent controlling cult as i mentioned before all the ways in which our lives were controlled so uh are suicide cults still around today I believe so yeah 
I believe they're brewing. I believe they're uh, they're potentially there, and uh, the next one will break. Will hit the headlines when it happens. Uh, we saw this in 1978 when the brainwashed followers in the People's Temple in Jonestown were ordered by their leader to poison themselves. 909 followers, including 276 children, died in the space of a few hours. In 1994, the New Age leader of the Order of the Solar Temple cult brainwashed 74 of his followers into committing suicide. He told them it was necessary to enter a higher spiritual plane. Religious leaders will tell you that what they teach you is necessary. That's what they teach you. You have to question it. 1997, the Heaven's Gate cult followed their leader and 39 committed suicide, believing his instructions to reach an extraterrestrial spacecraft that was following a comet. So, how on earth can people believe such things? Well, coercive control, you know, is potentially so lethally powerful that it can cause people to commit suicide and not far from that in my opinion in terms of destruction is the is separating of families splitting them up uh, of which is what what all cults do to some degree or another so let me ask you a question what level of control is acceptable to you I believe that is for you and me to decide individually. Mine personally um, is, is that zero control is acceptable. True leadership never controls. If you're a leader of a religious group, I don't care whether you're Christian, Jew, Muslim, Hindu, it doesn't matter. If you're a leader of a religious group, are you controlling your congregation more than 0%? If so, you're cultic. Because that's what a cultic trait is control true leadership never controls it only ever serves respects facilitates empowers and releases people to achieve for themselves and others so what if you have come to realize after listening to this video that you are under the control of a leader that you follow i suggest there are three possibilities to consider number one if you like the control and want to continue following your leader, then carry on. Number two, if you don't like being controlled but choose not to rock the boat, then carry on and live with a conflict of values that you will inevitably be experiencing. It's your choice. Number three, seek out help and leave. Chapter 23 in this book uh, is how to leave the cult you are in. And there are other videos in this playlist which address that issue and if you feel you have been coercively controlled domestically and would like to know more check out the following website which I'm going to put in the description below www.sanctuarycriminaljustice.com thank you for listening um, this is just a campaign an awareness campaign it's not to it's not to uh, control anyone or force them to make any decisions it's simply to create awareness of what's going on and um, and to encourage people to give them hope those who feel trapped and want to leave and to bring um, encouragement that there is healing available uh, if when people have been traumatized by such cults and it's to create awareness so people may think twice when approached by uh, a cult uh, trying to get them in to become a member please subscribe and um, if you like and comment on the video it will help the reach I've um, made this uh, uh, book accessible through YouTube that's why I'm narrating these chapters so you don't have to buy it so you can listen to it free on YouTube or you can get it on Amazon unlimited as an ebook free of charge or you can just buy it off Amazon as a, a softback or you could, could buy it off uh, buy it as an ebook if you wanted to but if that's not the purpose for the campaign, it's an awareness campaign. And I just want to tell you something, since you've come to the end of this video and you haven't uh, done a runner. <laughs> I got a, a private message yesterday from somebody who doesn't want to be named, so I can't even say the name of the cult or the person. And the person told me that they have left the cult they were in 
and they thanked me for for this resource this cultscape resource which has helped them to do that and um i was very very pleased i was delighted to hear that it makes this whole campaign worthwhile just one person it thrilled me and uh, i know there's people that will get encouragement from this and people may leave their cults without mentioning it and that's fine it's, it's a very personal thing it's it's uh, people's lives here thank you for listening